The St. Regis Parish family gathers for the fourth Sunday in Advent. Please stand. Drop down dew from above, you heavens. Let the clouds rain down the just one. Let the earth be opened and bring forth a Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we light the final candle on our Advent wreath this weekend, and we know that our time of preparation is nearing its end. We joyfully anticipate the welcoming of the Savior. As we prepare ourselves for this celebration of the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. As we hear Mary's model of faith in today's gospel, let us call to mind those times that we have failed to have that same faith and humility and trust in God. And let us ask our merciful God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go. Do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. 
I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ. Be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A virgin will give birth to a son. His name will be Emmanuel. God is with us. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. I said on the first Sunday of Advent that one of the hallmarks of this season as we listen to the words of the prophets is yearning for centuries. The prophets all longed for, and we hear it, we've been hearing from Isaiah throughout Advent, we've been hearing particular passages that kind of, we hear that yearning for deliverance. And the basis of that yearning of the prophets for centuries is found in our first reading tonight. Going back to the time of King David and Nathan the prophet, over a thousand years before the time of Jesus' first coming into the world. And we hear God speaking through Nathan the prophet to David. David, as he is growing old, wants to build a temple, but uh, you know, to house the ark and everything else. And God says, that's not for you to do. I will give you a house. Descendants. And I will deliver my people. And as the generations passed, 
and things kind of went south for Israel. You know, the time of David when the kingdom was unified and David the great king and Solomon his son. But then things started to go bad. The kingdom was divided. Kings came to rule who were inept and or corrupt. And the Israelites knew all kinds of complications and difficulties all the way up to the time of the Babylonian exile and beyond. And yet, through everything bad that happened, the prophets continue to yearn for the coming of what was promised long ago. And that begins to come to fulfillment as we hear in the gospel today. This very sublime encounter between Mary and the angel Gabriel. Gabriel comes to announce that it is through Mary that God is going to fulfill his promise in ways that Nathan or any of the prophets more than they could have possibly expected. power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. The Word will take on flesh and dwell among us to lead and redeem us from our sins. And Mary, as young as she was, with all of everything that the appearance of an angel and everything that the angel was telling her had to be overwhelming. But yet we hear that famous fiat of Mary, let it be done to me according to your word. And the Greek phrase there that Luke uses is not one of Mary just passively saying, okay God, whatever you want but it is Mary joyfully embracing her vocation, even though as a human being she could not possibly have comprehended everything that the angel was revealing to her. And as overwhelming as that moment would have been for her, she nevertheless in her humility and faith is ready to embrace what God has in store for her. So great is her trust. and the world will have its Savior through her. As we come together in these closing days of Advent, we have heard the call of John the Baptist, the call to repent, to reform our lives, to make the changes that we have to make. And we do that you know, because we don't have the same vocation exactly as Mary. She has a singular vocation. But we who are disciples look to her as mother and model of faith because we too are called to bring the presence of Christ into the world. Not in the same way as Mary exactly, but by our lives as disciples. God calls each one of us to a vocation as a disciple. We are called to do whatever it is that God calls us to do, to be a priest, to be a good husband, to be a good wife, to be loving, to share our resources, all those other things that disciples are called to do throughout the course of our lives. And I doubt many of us have ever had an angel appear to us and tell us exactly what to do but we still are being called and we still live out a vocation. And like Mary, we have to place our trust in God. So as we are being called to whatever we're being called to do in life, as we're being called to a vocation, as priest, religious, married, single, whatever it may be, and everything else that happens to us in the course of our lifetimes we have to have the same yes for God that Mary did. Let it be done to me according to your word. 
yes, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. Not passively waiting for God to do whatever to us, but as Mary does, joyfully embracing our vocation, joyfully embracing our call, as challenging as it is sometimes. And as we embrace our vocation, as we embrace the challenge of discipleship, we too make Christ known in the world. We make his presence more alive through us. As we're getting ready for Christmas this week, as we get ready to celebrate that first coming in time, that joyful celebration, We are reminded that as he has come once, so he will come again at the end of time. And just as we joyfully celebrate his coming in time, we are also called to joyfully welcome him as disciples every day to allow his grace to fill us. We need to say yes to God. And maybe this year, as challenging as everything has been, maybe this Christmas will allow us to do exactly that. We yearn for the peace of Christ. We yearn to know the love of God. We yearn to know freedom. We yearn to know God. As we gather in these final days of Advent and as we prepare for Christmas, let us open our hearts in new ways to allow the grace of Christ in so that as we answer our call as disciples, we can have that same yes as Mary to embrace our vocations to make Christ known just as she brings forth the Savior in our world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring the needs of all to the rock of our salvation, whose steadfast love endures forever. The response is, Come, Lord Jesus. For our new shepherd, Bishop-elect Lawrence Kulik, may he be filled with grace, 
humility, and strength as he takes up the leadership of the Diocese of Greensburg. We pray. For all civic leaders and all who share in the responsibilities of enacting laws for the common good, we pray. For all students, teachers, and school administrators who are preparing for Christmas break, we pray. For the St. Regis Parish family gathered here and for its life of worship and witness, we pray. For parents who are examples of holiness for their children and encourage them to become priests, deacons, or religious, we pray. For those whose days are fulfilled and who are gathered with our ancestors, especially Lorraine Garvis, may they find rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way the Drost and Grandy families. We pray. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. God of all goodness, you provide the key that unlocks the way to salvation, the gift of your Son. Through him you destroy the prison walls of death for all who dwell in fear and darkness. As we await his return in glory, may we see in our world your desire to free all who are burdened with heavy chains. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when at last he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Regis and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of God, rejoice in God, my Savior, rejoice in God, my Savior, proclaim the greatness of God, rejoice in God, my Savior. Rejoice in God, my Savior, for He has favored His lowly one. All men shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. Proclaim the greatness of God. Rejoice in God, my Savior. Rejoice in God, my Savior. favors those who fear his name in every generation. He has shown the might and strength of his arm and scattered the proud of heart. Pro of God, rejoice in God, my Savior, rejoice in God, my Savior. He has cast the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with all good gifts and sent the rich away. Proclaim the greatness of God, rejoice in God, my Savior. Rejoice in God, my Savior.
greatness of God, rejoice in God, my Savior. Rejoice in God, my Savior. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Christmas is a common, uh, COVID Christmas. Um, uh, we have masses at 4.30 and 7 on Christmas Eve. We have midnight and we have 9.30 Christmas morning. Um, the responses we've got from uh, folks who have let us know what they're planning to do. Um, obviously, the 4.30 mass is the uh, one we've had the most responses for. We have over 100 as of Thursday. It's the last time I checked, it was about 115. Uh, keep in mind that we still have to practice social distancing. We'll have, the church will be open, the hall will be open, you know, we'll accommodate as many as we can. Um, but let me just point out a few things, and this is also in a bulletin article today. First of all, if you are sick, please stay home. Doesn't matter if you have COVID or if you just have a cold or the flu or whatever else. If you have a cold, you're more susceptible to getting something else and you're more susceptible to give something to somebody else. So if you're sick, please stay home. The obligations to attend Mass are lifted. That's holy days like Christmas as well as Sunday. So if you are sick, please stay home. If you are of a susceptible group um, of age or other ailments, please strongly consider not coming to the 430 Mass. So I'll tell you right now, that's going to be the biggest one that we've had since we've gone back. We're going to try to accommodate everybody as best we can, but that mass will, we're going to, that one, I'm a little worried about how we're going to accommodate everybody. So if you can avoid that mass, please do. We have a 7, we have midnight, we have 9.30. So, you know, the other ones, uh, we haven't gotten as many responses, anywhere near as many responses. So please consider one of those other masses, especially if you're in a susceptible group. Please be patient, especially if you're coming to the 430 Mass. We're going to try to accommodate everybody as best we can, but keep in mind, as I said, we do have to practice social distancing, especially if you're coming with a family with a large number of people. We're going to try to do the best we can. Uh, but please be patient, and please be charitable. Uh, we're going to do the best that we can. Um, so it will be a different kind of Christmas this year. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I hope we're going to be able to accommodate everybody okay, uh, but please do keep those few caveats in mind. Uh, Wednesday evening, we're going to be decorating the church for Christmas. Um, we had a wonderful turnout last year when we did this. Um, that's something that we can, we're going to keep socially distanced while we decorate, wear your mask. Uh, we're going to start at five o'clock. Uh, when we kind of wrap up, we're also going to uh, safely serve uh, pizza and pop, um, so if you can come on Wednesday and help out with that, um, that would be great. As you can see, the 
uh, tree is up out in the gathering space. You can bring your ornament in um, anytime during the Christmas season. I hope these final days of Advent are um, a time of joyful preparation. Try not to be too frantic. Uh, and as we prepare ourselves for Christmas, let us pray that we can keep the peace of Christmas uh, in our hearts this year. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. And please respond to each invocation with the hearty and heartfelt amen. You believe that the Son of God once came to us. You look for him to come again. May his coming bring you the light of his holiness and free you with his blessing. May God make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. You rejoice that our Redeemer came to live with us as man. When he comes again in glory, may he reward you with endless life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Shall come to you, oh, we.